All right, people of God, I just want to continue off from the last video that I did and kind of, uh, I know it got cut off uh, abruptly, but um, <clears throat> yes, a lot of the things that we went through, went through on that uh, on that line, pledging and everything, it was a lot of physical abuse. Uh, there's two ways that you can join the organization, a uh, Greek letter organization. One is called being made. You know, uh, which is going through the hazing process, and a lot of these organizations they say we are we are not a hazing fraternity or a sorority. They're lying because they haze. <clears throat> That's how you join, because you're really not a real true member unless you go through the process, the pledge process. The other way you can join is what's called the grad chapter or or alumni chapter, which is pretty much is not a is not a strenuous you know uh, process at all. And you're pretty much, you know, paying dues, paying fees and stuff. It can go from five hundred to eight hundred dollars or whatever, and uh, <clears throat> and sign some papers. And you're a member, you're an alumni member. That's Bill Clinton did the same thing. You know, he didn't go through no no line or anything like that. Different uh, uh, actors and actresses and and uh, uh, NBA or NFL athletes, different people. As long as you got the clout and you got the notoriety. And they want to be connected to you. Yeah, you you can become a member there real easily. All right. And so anyway, I wanted to bring that out because these organizations uh, and, and people, you know, who are joining them and trying to claim Christ and try to say that these are Christian organizations. I challenge you if you're watching this and you belong to a Greek letter organization, uh, I challenge you to tell us exactly what you went through. I guarantee you won't do it. Because when you start speaking about what you went through in the hazing process you went through, you're going to you're going to put your foot in your mouth because you realize this wasn't of God. Jesus Christ didn't haze or pledge his apostles to see if they was going to be committed to him. Hey, Peter, uh, uh, tell me the, the 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 name, the last you know uh, five prophets in the in in uh, the Old Testament in the, in the days of Israel, and if Peter couldn't recite them, he smacks Peter across his face. Jesus wasn't pledging his disciples or anything like that. You know, Jesus was training disciples to have a kingdom mindset, to love God. And so these Greek letter fraternities and sororities and some of you got, like I said, you got children, you know, going off to these colleges and stuff. And I encourage you to please show them this video or others like it to warn them. Because, again, that's a demonic spirit. That's a territorial spirit over those universities to seduce your children to follow after the things of, of 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 demonic worship and go after the ways of this world all right and reject jesus christ so i wanted to kind of uh bring that up to you that yes you know going through that process is very humiliating it is a uh, it is physically uh, and mentally uh, uh abuse you know and uh there's a lot of things that you know even on the uh, on sorority side there's a lot of sexual acts being done and uh, you know, even uh, it's almost like like slavery, you know, even Alpha Phi Alpha, they, you're called an ape when you join that, when you join that organization. They they like having a, a black monkey as their mascot, which is connected to, you know, pharaohs in Egypt and stuff. But why in the world are you part of an African-American uh, fraternity and you're calling yourself an ape? You know, that's just like, you know, uh, knuckleheads run around using the word niggas all the time. But the moment a white person said you got a problem with it, but you got African-Americans saying it all the time. They got it all in the music and everything else, but you ain't got a problem with it then. You had a rap group called Niggas With Attitude. So it's, 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 it's ridiculous. It's hypocrisy and it's foolishness. All right. So I want to kind of uh, bring some things up real quick. And that is that there is nothing about these organizations that is Christian. OK, absolutely nothing at all. They can try to say it's the brotherhood, it's the sisterhood, it's unity. We do community service and everything. That means absolutely nothing, because when it's all said and done, whose name are you doing it in? You're not doing it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You're doing it in the name of that false God on that crest of your Greek fraternity or sorority. You're doing it to honor your Greek fraternity and sorority, to honor some dead founders that you worship and that you pledge your allegiance to. That's whose name you're doing it in. Okay. So one of the things, you, you let's look at some stuff that uh, these organizations promote and that they endorse. All right. They can't speak out against it either because many of their members are involved in these particular acts. 
and I'm looking at my nose, so that's why I'm looking away a little bit. They support abortion and homosexuality. All right. Uh, there's a uh, and, I'll, and when I deal with the AKAs, I'll show you a woman that was head of the Planned Parenthood organization for a while. All right. And, you know, <laughs> we know what Planned Parenthood is about, you know, in, in Christian Dome and the kingdom, you know exactly that it's the spirit of Molech. So how in the world is a person a part of a so-called sorority that's founded on biblical principles uh, uh, over a Planned Parenthood organization where it kills and murders children? That goes that's called an abomination. You know, in God's eyes, the hands that shed innocent blood. All right. So then you got homosexuality. You see in Cap Alpha Psi, that's the clip that I showed with the two men. You know, one of them was in Cap Alpha Psi, a homosexual uh, getting married to another man. They can't speak against it. You know why? Because they took the same oath and vow that their Kappa brothers took. And so they're considered their brothers regardless. So they can never speak against it. See, in the kingdom of God in churches, you can speak against it. Because the word of God speaks against it. People that follow Jesus Christ are going to speak against it. And one of the things that I find that people who are in these organizations, what they try to do, when you start bringing the facts and you start uh, exposing the things that they know that you were involved in, they try to deflect the conversation. They try to deflect it with another argument. Well, yeah, you can say this. Everybody's seeing or You know, the churches do this. I know pastors that using money and stuff, buying planes and stuff and and people fornicating and everything. They always try to deflect it. Really, what you're doing is saying, yes, what we do is wrong. But what they're doing is worse. Point the finger at them. OK, well, you check my other videos out because I deal with a lot of stuff that goes on in ministries as well. But you cannot deflect. Because based because uh, 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 of the facts that's being brought out, Your, these organizations, they can't speak against homosexuality. As a matter of fact, they're going to start and they have started embracing transgender uh, uh, members. They can't speak against it because Satan's kingdom is not divided. All right. They support perversion. They always support uh, fornication. They always support, you know, dancing to secular ungodly music. As a matter of fact, when that Atomic Dog song come on, those demons and those Q dolls get activated. Okay? That's their theme song. So they always promoting, you know, they always promoting, you know, secular, you know, worldly dance and stuff. They ain't, they ain't praise dancing when they twirl on their canes. They're not praise dancing when they chant the Alpha Phi Alpha. They're not worshiping. They're not dancing to the songs of the Lord. They always got to dance to something profane because that music is worship. All right. So uh, another thing we got to look at is the people that have died trying to join these organizations. You know, there's the people that are drowned in oceans, have drowned in, you know, during the players process and stuff, binge drinking and and all that other stuff. They've been exposed to, you know, watching uh, perverse porn uh, movies and things of that nature. And these organizations have had, had, had excuse me, have had to pay out millions of dollars in lawsuits because of certain incidents that have taken place on different chapters, you know, uh, across America. They are fueled. They are fueled by money. Spiritual covenants, self-exaltation, and worldly popularity. Every time someone is shows an interest to join one of these organizations, these organizations always bring up well-known, famous people in Hollywood, in in politics, uh, in uh, any like world government, in any former civil rights movements, or any athletes. They got to bring up well-known figures because. They are designed, they're connected to the world. We know that the word of God says in the book of James, friendship with the world. You are, excuse me, it says you are adulterers and adulteresses. Do you not know that friendship with the world is hatred towards God? Adulterers and adulteresses. That's why I said when you join these organizations, you're committing spiritual adultery before the Lord. These organizations are designed, they desire to be affiliated and always connected with the world. See, Jesus Christ says that unless a person be born again by the spirit, unless a, born, unless a person has the spirit of God in him, he's not of God. That's how you know these organizations are, are, are not uh, by the Holy Spirit. They don't have the spirit of God in them. They're not of God because the spirit of God does not lead a person to go after and be yoked up with the world. Jesus Christ speaks against what the world is doing because what the world does is evil. But yet these people are doing opposite of what the word of God is saying. And they're going after the word. They want to be affiliated with the elite. They want to be affiliated with high profile people. 
They want to be connected with them. Because when you connect with high profile people, that valid, they, they, they use that as a validation, as a seal of approval for them. They don't use God. They don't use God as a seal of approval because if they did, they wouldn't have false gods on their crests and shields. But no, they want to be identified with the world. A lot of these organizations claim to be the light. Even Freemasonry claims to be the light. Alpha Phi Alpha claims to be the light, you know, unto men. And they're right. Because Satan masquerades himself like an angel of light too. They're deceiving people. They're seducing people. And they're using all kind of philosophical demonic wisdom to entice and seduce young people. One of the things that they're doing, and I'm going to get into is they just try to recruit young people in high schools with Kappa League, with Sigma Gents and, and uh, uh, Delta Divas and, and with Sigma Gamma Rho, they got Auroras and all that other stuff. But I want to, uh, I want to, um, uh, just wanted to hit on that real quick, but I want to, I don't want to uh, waste any more time. Uh, I want to kind of go with the word of God and I want to show you something that I have that is really going to drive the point home of what I was talking about throughout these videos. This is, this is something that people cannot refute. And again, before they try to come, you know, to this channel or try to come and hear, you know, others teaching against these organizations and try to refute it, they will never tell you what they did to join. Think about it, people. All right. So anyway, let's go to second Kings chapter 17 verses 32. And we're going to go through verse 38. It says, so they feared the Lord. And uh, just a little, um, I want to lay a foundation real quick. This is when the, the people of God went into bondage in Babylon. All right. They went into bondage because, again, they kept going after false gods. God told them not to do it. And so they kept doing it. And every time they did, God will put them in bondage and say, fine, you want to serve those guys? Let them get you out of bondage. They're going to be your oppressors. And so God will use a wicked nation and enslaved his people to teach them a lesson about going after these false gods. Instead of destroying them, instead of exposing them and, and cutting them off the land, they started making covenants with them because Israel started looking at things with their natural eyes and did not hear what God was telling them. They started getting grabbed. They started gravitating with their natural eyes and being enticed. But with all the things that they saw, those who worshiped those false gods were doing. It says, so they feared the Lord. They feared the Lord. They knew how to worship God. They knew the sacrifice and everything. They feared the Lord and made unto themselves of the lowest of them priests of the high places which sacrificed for them in the houses of the high places. They feared the Lord and served their own gods. Feared the Lord, served their own gods. They go to church, get on a praise team, worship, preach, teach the word of God, sing the songs of the Lord and everything, but then still serve their own gods. After the manner of the nations whom they carried away from hence, Unto this day, they do after the former manners. They fear not the Lord, neither do they after the statutes or after the ordinances or after the law and commandment, which the Lord commanded the children of Jacob, whom he named Israel, with whom the Lord hath made a covenant and charged them, saying, You shall not fear other gods, nor bow yourselves to them, nor serve them, nor sacrifice them. And by the way, when I was a, a mentor in the school system, I had a man tell me he was an alpha. And he's, and I started sharing with him about the uh, uh, the deception behind that organization. And he's like, yeah, man, you're right. Because when we, um, when we were pledging, we had to bow before the alpha altar. And people still want to defend it. Verse 38. And the covenant that I have made with you, you shall not forget. Neither shall you fear other gods. But the Lord your God you shall fear. And he shall deliver you out of the hand of all your enemies. Howbeit they did not hearken. But they did after their former manner. They didn't even listen. They didn't hearken. Like people today, they don't want to listen. They ain't going to take time to fast and pray. At least see what the word of God is saying. See what I'm saying is true. And they, instead, they just don't want to listen. See, even the, uh, God told Samuel, Samuel, when you want them, they ain't rejecting you. They're rejecting me. All right. And so it says uh, in verse 41, so these nations feared the Lord. And serve their graven images, both their children and children's children, 
as did their fathers, so they do unto this day. When people join these organizations, these demon, demon spirits, like I said, have access to your bloodline and to your children. A lot of times people have generational curses and bloodline issues, sicknesses and diseases or constant issues of accidents, premature death and stuff happening in their bloodline because a doorway was open through idolatry. The doorway was open. See, God says, I will love those that love me down a thousand generations, but I will hate those that hate me. I will visit the iniquity of the fathers down to the third and fourth generations. OK, we have to look at this stuff. These things that this thing is spiritual. As a matter of fact, a lot of times people can't even get married. All right. Sometimes they can't even get married. A lot of these women that desire to get a husband they can't get married because they've already committed a spiritual marriage. You married yourself to that spirit, to that deity in that organization. You married yourself to that to that uh, that Greek God or goddess. And the ones that do get married, they usually end up marrying somebody that's in the opposite organization of them. Sometimes in the same organization as them because the homosexuality and lesbianism is running rampant in these organizations where they can't speak against it. They can't say nothing against it because that's their brothers and sisters. So what happens when a Christian joins an organization that does not speak against sin, that can't come against sin? They then got yoked up with unbelievers. So I want to point out something real quick. In verse 32, I read it earlier, it says, So they feared the Lord and made unto themselves of the lowest of them priests of the high places, which sacrificed for them in the houses of the high places. It says they made unto them priests. A lot of these leaders that do not speak against Greek fraternities and sororities are doing exactly what Aaron did. It's because they want to please the people. They don't want to lose people. They don't want to offend anybody. All right. But a lot of these leaders at the parties, organizations, that's how they got their church. That's how they got their ministry started, because they were connected to somebody in their denomination that's affiliated with these organizations, the organization that they're affiliated with. Freemasonry, Order of the Eastern Star, you name it, whatever it is. A lot of these ministers like uh, that guy, uh, 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 Pastor Dewey, whatever his name is, and his, his crazy doctrine that he's speaking now, he's a mega, member of Omega Sci-Fi. So who do you think is going to have on his leadership? Members of Omega Sci-Fi or somebody in the Greek fraternity or sorority? Because it says they set themselves, they made unto themselves of the lowest of them priests. They selected priests that would teach them how to serve those false gods and serve the Lord at the same time. All right. And so when you read that chapter, you will see how those priests, how that king, those leaders of Babylon said, get a priest, show them how to worship your Lord, and they'll show you how to worship the other gods as well. What, are they, what were they doing? They were mixing and bringing false religions, false pagan religions in with the true and living God worship. God did something very powerful to Aaron's sons when they did that. They took strange fire from another altar and tried to put it on God's altar. God killed them, killed Aaron's sons. Aaron was a priest. How in the world was his children who seen his, their father serve, you know, uh, as, as a priest for God? How was they able to pick that stuff up and go at the false gods? Because Aaron did it before. That's how. See, when these children are born by parents that are part of these Greek letter organizations, I've seen it. I've seen it with my own eyes. Their children join the same Greek letter organization. They try to keep it in the bloodline. And we wonder why so many people, so many uh, uh, people that are claiming Jesus Christ are bound by sickness and disease. They're having all kinds of issues, marital problems. It seems like it goes from generation to generation. A door has been opened and those demon spirits have had access to that generation, to that bloodline. And those demons are legalists. They feel like they have the right to be there. And they do because that door has not been closed. It has been not. It has not been repented of nor renounced. All right. It could be an, a, a, an area of barrenness. A woman cannot get pregnant and everything. These are things that people do not take in consideration because they don't know when they join these organizations. And that's why I said the ministry of deliverance and spiritual warfare is so important for every ministry because people of God need to be set free. Jesus Christ said it specifically, deliverance is the children's bread. It belongs to the children of God. All right. So I want to share that scripture with you real quick. Hold on for one second. All right. I want to
wanted to check the time because I want to get into this next segment, which is very important, you know, to this teaching. Okay. And that is this. These are the factual things that I have. I'm going to stand up right here. This is Cap Alpha Psi Ritual Book. All right. The revised edition. Like I said, this was given to me. This is from way back in the day, a couple, like decades ago. All right. And I'm going to go through this and show you exactly what it is that the foundation of this fraternity was laid. And we know that the Bible says that a bad tree cannot bring forth good fruit. OK, and a good tree cannot bring forth bad fruit. And so there's a reason why these organizations and sometimes people will say, well, my chapter don't do that. My chapter don't do that. Look here. You are a part of an organization in its entirety. See, when people of God join a ministry, they become part of a ministry. They join the church, but they belong to Jesus Christ. They belong to the kingdom of God. And so when things are not dealt with in the church, then that leaven, it does spread. But like I said before, Jesus Christ, when he addressed the church of Thyatira, he said, you have that woman that calls herself a prophetess and have led my servants to commit adultery and fornications and eat things sacrificed to idols. He said, I will kill her children with death. Not everybody was following Jezebel. Not everybody was following Balaam. Okay. Who led the stumbling block. Not everybody was following the doctrine of the Nicolaitans. Jesus said, you have some. That are there. You have those in the midst of you that are doing this. Even the apostle Peter wrote and said, you will have false prophets and false teachers in the midst of you. Okay. Now, see, the reason why I bring that up is because when people try to say, well, my chapter don't do this. Listen, you are part of an organization. But see, in the kingdom of God, in the church, people may be practicing sin, but that don't make you a part of that either. Because God knows those who are his. But with these organizations, your foundation is rooted in immorality and rooted in wickedness. And I'm going to show it to you right here through this book. All right. So I want to show you this. This is a table of contents of this book. It's deal with, you know, the general information and things of that nature. Opening ceremony, closing ceremony, requirements for the pledge, pledge ceremony, pre-initiation, preparation and everything. So uh, they really try to set things up and set things in order. It says uh, the property to be secured in the chapter archives, you know, uh, charter learned by the grand chapter constitution and statutes of Kappa Alpha Psi, at least five rituals, a holy Bible, complete roster of the active and inactive members initiated into the chapter and of members that have transferred to the chapter. All right. I'm going to go through this kind of fairly quickly. Here we go right here. The additional items are required for initiate initiatory ceremony. Supply of in, 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 invisible ink. All right. Number two, open flame. A can of, what is that, a, a, a turno. An alcohol lamp or charcoal burner may be used. Number three, means of producing successfully a blue light and a red light number four supply of crackers number five a rope made into a noose what is that for i'm gonna show you what it's for this is also what i'm, I'm just gonna tell you right now it's also connected to, to uh, freemasonry they do the same ritual number six branding iron a wire will suffice number seven small piece place piece of raw meat Number eight, sufficient amount of sand or small gravel to be divided into two parts. One part is to be slightly heated. Number nine, shallow pan large enough in to, to, to step in. That's a ritual of witchcraft. Number 10, small amount of cracked ice. Let's go back to number nine, small pan or large enough to step in. That's like that uh, movie. Um, I think, was it, uh, I don't know if it was Constantine, but um, the uh, Keanu Reeves played an actor. In one movie where he would go into the spear realm, he, he he put half his body in a bathtub of water and other half out. And he did some kind of transcendental meditation and went to the realm and went to the spirit realm. OK, and saw these demons and stuff trying to come at them. Number 11, cotton baiting. Number 12, bondage for the wrist. All right. Paddles, clubs, whips and other instruments of torture are on display at the at the abode of the. Thracians. These are not to be used. All right. Then we have the people that are leading these ceremonies or initiations are called uh, the pole mark. 
Vice Polemark. And the other guy's name is the, the Keeper of Records. So Polemark is pretty much a general over an army, over troops. All right. This is where I wanted to get to. Preparations and procedures for meetings. Look at number two down. I got it highlighted. It says the altar of Kappa Alpha Psi. Now, what is an altar used for? An altar is used for worship to summons a spirit or a being. When we go to the when we go to the house of God, we worship God. Our, our hearts become the altar before the Lord. And you know when we have altar calls in churches, we have altar calls where people come and receive prayer for the spirit of God to move and and deal with their hearts and touch them. In the Old Testament, Altars were always erected for false gods because they were summons the demon spirits that those people were inquiring of to receive a direction, to receive prosperity, to receive whatever they wanted. That's where they brought worship and sacrifices. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, it says the altar cap off side, which is the sacred Delphi, Delphic shrine, shall be placed in the center of the room and covered with a crimson and cream coverlet. The Holy Bible open to the third chapter of Proverbs shall be placed on the altar. See what I'm saying? In 2 Kings chapter 17, how they try to mix the worship, how they try to bring the Bible. That's what the same thing they do in Freemasonry. They try to bring the Bible and, and connect it with other false religious practices. And all it is, is trying to connect the, the Bible with demons. The word of God says, what fellowship does Christ have with Bilal? What fellowship does the temple of God have with idols? See, they mix and mingle, people. And for those that want to try to say they did not bow down to a false god, you got it right there. See, uh, the Delphi Shrine, that was always connected to the false god Apollo. Delphi was a sanctuary to the god Apollo, who was the son of Zeus in Greek mythology. Uh, the Oracle of Apollo gave cryptic you know, predictions and guidance. The Oracle of Delphi, she spoke for the God Apollo and answered questions for the Greeks and foreign inquiries about colonization, religion, and power. All right. Now, I wanted to bring this up because when you look up what the Delphi shrine was, it was a dedication to it was basically, you know, the, the shrine of Apollo. Located in Delphi. So let's look at what else these organ this organization do. Look at the look at the hymn of Cap Alpha Psi. It says, O noble Cap Alpha Psi, the pride of all their hearts, the true manliness, fidelity thou ever doest in part, the source of delights and joys and happiness thou art, O noble Cap Alpha Psi, from thee. They'll never part. Remember when I told you that word, the, they're personifying something. So they're chanting to something. They're chanting to a being or a spirit because you cannot say the to an object. You say the to a something like a, a person or a spirit. All throughout the Bible, <clears throat> we hear our God say thou or thee. And he's talking to individuals. He's talking to people. This is for identification purposes. All right. Then we see their prayer that they had at the bottom. I want to just want to highlight the thing. It says the spirit of the fraternity, a broad and comprehensive knowledge of the phenomena and forces of the universe. That's the new age stuff. So then we look at right here, the closing ceremony, the keeper of records, brother Polmark, thy will shall be obeyed. So, the pledge ceremony. In this pledge ceremony, they mention uh, different things. Let me see what I wanted, uh, wanted to point out here. Let me see. This is pretty much like one of the rituals that they're going through. They're taking one of their pledges through. It says right here, if I willfully, if they willfully violate this oath, they expect to have all connection with the organization completely severed. They swear that they shall keep secret 
and and violate all matters pertaining to Kappa Alpha Psi. There was something else I wanted to bring out. Here we go, right here. Preparations and general stress for initiation, initiatory ceremony. One of the things that they say is right here, the pledge is prepared. I'll turn it this way. The pledge is prepared for the initiatory ceremony by applying blindfolds to the eyes after placing a small pad of cotton over the eyelids. Care must be taken to secure the blindfold too tightly, not to secure the blindfold too tightly. All vision must be obliterated. The hands and wrists are securely bound in front of the individual. And I guess that's stuff. I guess that's what they call, you know, Christian principles to do something like that to somebody. Look at report number 14. This is during their pledge process. Like I said, they have altered things since then because this is an old, very old document. And they've altered a lot of things in their pledge process. But again, the foundation was laid. And so they do have to take people through certain rituals and uh, 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 physical and mental abuse, psychological abuse, in order for them to seem to be deemed worthy to uh, be members of Kappa Alpha Psi. It says photographic flash apparatus of electric light bulbs arranged so that they may be turned on and off by the priest. See that? The priest. Remember we just read in 2 Second Kings chapter 17 how they erected priests. They used priests. They selected priests to do their worship, to teach them their worship. I'm trying to make sure I didn't miss anything. Here we go. It says right here. I'm sorry. Sorry, people. It says right here. The priests. Then with the body hands, they apply the flame of the gods. That is plural. This is the priest talking. Then with them, they talking about uh, pretty much uh, what they're what they're using, the objects that they're using on these pledges. Then with them, the holy hands apply I the flames of the gods. See, more than one. So we see it pretty much. I want to make sure I get some things for the sake of time. Um, achieve it through fraternity knowledge. Okay, this is what it's dealing with there. Uh, what their symbols kind of mean. It says, The initiatory ceremony which you have just experienced was designed primarily to fix this model firmly into your mind. Of course, your purpose of achievement is in this case was membership in this fraternity. You remember that in the first instance, you were permitted to show your spirit of fraternity by offering yourself as a ransom for a member of this organization. They firmly trust that your brotherly love for the members of this fraternity will ever be such as to induce you to do your utmost to secure their safety, happiness, and well-being. In the second place, you remember that after you you had manifested a spirit of fraternity. You did not possess sufficient knowledge to read the great scroll of Kappa Alpha Psi. So they got a scroll. All right. And that's what this whole thing is about. Gnosticism. Always trying to have the knowledge and everything. Uh, that's what was always in, embedded in the Greek culture. In order to overcome this deficiency, this deficiency, you went on a pilgrimage to the great oracle of Delphi and besought the oracles to grant unto you sufficient knowledge and to read the scroll. So pretty much they were acting out a skit of going on a journey, going after the that that Delphi Oracle, which, like I said before, that was a woman who spoke for the God Apollo, which is pretty much a witch. See, these false gods and stuff are nothing but demons. And those who are speaking for them are witches. OK, it says uh, by seeing diligently for the knowledge which you lack and by fulfilling all the requirements. See, again, that whole thing about knowledge, that's what, that's what they're thinking. They're bringing themselves into the light, which they impose. You came into possession of the knowledge which you desire. One of the requirements of the oracle was that you make some effort on your part by offering your own substance, barley cake and sacrifice on the great Delphic altar. See, now I wanted you to see this right here where it says, finally, 
Finally, after you have obtained knowledge and you started for the assembly of the Greeks, you encountered outlaws who, after you vainly trying to dissuade you from the purpose you had set before you and to induce you to forsake in the hour of need. If, if, if my camera cuts off people, I'm going to re, just going to continue it on the next video. It said the, on, on the purpose you had set before you and to induce you to forsake in the hour of of need a true and worthy friend tormented you with the derision scorn and threat of death so you will find it subsequent life when you have obtained knowledge and true friends vile men of ignorance and unworthy motives will strive to induce you to forsake them and failing in this will you cast upon you aspersions and as much discomfort as they can but on your road from Delphi, the great Delphian god Apollo came to your relief and with his great spear slew the wretched outlaws and put them in ignominious rout. Look at that. Delphi, the great Delphian god Apollo. There it is right there. Idolatry, a demon spear, they said, came and delivered them. Okay. Look at this. Ever remember the words of the oracle? If thou art really noble, wise, and true, immortal gods will guide them safely through. See that word gods again. I'm tell, telling people that it's, it's, it's idolatry. Listen to this. In the days of old Greece, they talk about the symbolism. The victors in the athletic games held at Delphi were crowned with the laurel wreath. To them, it was a symbol of victory and achievement. To us, it has the same meaning. The inscription which you see under the wreath is the Greek word for achievement. This is They're talking about their crest. So when you see the cap off a side crest, they're giving you the symbols of what each uh, item means on that crest. Below the wreath, the figures in the three panels symbolize the means of achievement. The first is a pair of clasped hands signifying fraternity. The second is a Grecian scroll bearing the Greek letters Phi Nu Pi signifying knowledge. The three Greek letters on the scroll are the initial letters for the Greek words, fraternity, knowledge, and fidelity. The last figure is an uplifted arm bearing a spear, which symbolizes fidelity. I'm going to tell you right now, that arm with that spear is the arm of Apollo. Because one of Apollo's symbols is a wreath, is a, is a, is a bow and arrow, and there's something else that, that it symbolizes with them. Uh, a python or a swan. He was also known as a sun god and had the gift of prophecy. The arrow represents how he killed python and was associated with music, dance, and medicine. All right. Now remember this. Also, Apollo's name was Phobos, which means bright and shiny. That's exactly what Lucifer was described as. The shining morning star. All right. So when you see things like this, they're describing certain things on their crest, but everything that they're describing has this connection to that false God, Apollo, the altar, the wreath. They have the, the, uh, the bow and arrows, which is the on, on that, on that crest. You're going to see the arrow. And I'm going to show a picture of it as well. Okay. And it says the last figure is an uplifted arm bearing a spear, which symbolizes fidelity. The, this, the latter figure not only indicates the extent to which members will go in their fidelity to each other and the cause of right, but also symbolizes the protection which the gods grant unto every loyal.